Six years ago, when I was on the Legal and Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, they talked about putting up a memorial to honor Maine women veterans. It was a very large, ambitious project. It was going to cost about half a million dollars. But the legislature approved it at the time, of course, without any funding. So every year for six years, when uh, the Bureau of Veteran Services came before m my committee, whether it was legal and vets or appropriations, I asked the same question, what's going on with the Monument for Women Veterans? Well, this year, it was very late in the session, and it's our short session. I asked the same question, and again, it was the same answer, nothing. So I said, well, instead of doing the monument right now, um, which we're still planning on doing, let's do something immediately. And I went down and submitted an after deadline bill to put a plaque in the Hall of Flags. We have several plaques in the Hall of Flags right now honoring World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and um, the uh, war on terrorism. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to do something um, and raise the money on it. Uh, it was one of the things when we were at committee, when we had the bill before us, the same question came up. They said, that's wonderful, Representative. We can pass this bill, but again, we have no money for it. And that's when I said, I'll raise the money. So that's great. I that's automatically great. became the, uh, the, the chair of it. And then I um, asked Tom Saviello, who is also a state representative, if he would co-chair it with me. It's uh, very important for me that this is perceived as a nonpartisan issue. Both the Democrats and the Republicans uh, have been working on this, uh, especially in this election season where things have gone negative. Uh, Democrats and Republicans all around the state are working on this plaque together very quietly uh, to, because it's a very important issue for all of us. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. I have no idea how many veterans, that women veterans there must be. Do you know? Well, that's one of the things that this, it's not really, about just the plaque. It's a, it's a two-prong campaign that we're working on for this. One, is, one part is to have the plaque on the wall in the Hall of Flags, um, and you'll see the plaque up here. That is beautiful. On women veterans, and uh, so there's the donation part, that in order to have the plaque on there, we're raising money to, um, to be able to afford to have it cast. It's a bronze plaque that's going up. Beautiful. The other part of this is an outreach program to contact women veterans. Believe it or not, there is no list in the state of Maine on who are women veterans. So it is our um, kind of opportunity now with the plaque to reach out to Maine women veterans to have them sign up. So every woman that comes forward, uh, and I've been having a lot that are emailing me or calling me directly, I send the information on to the Bureau of Veteran Services and I send it on to Terry Moore, who's the head of the Advisory Commission for Maine Women Veterans. So it's going to two different locations. And why that is so important is that so many women are not taking advantage of the federal benefits that they have and that they are entitled to and that they deserve. So this way, it's an outreach program where we can reach these women and let them know what's available to different programs, not only through the federal government, but what's available right here in the state of Maine, um, different classes Fantastic. or counseling on um, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, different things that we have available to them. and. Uh, what I found talking with a lot of these women, they really diminish their service. They say, well, I didn't serve in combat, or I was just a nurse, or I just worked on airplanes. And they don't realize they're a veteran, and they are entitled to the same services from the federal government that um, other people ha are receiving. And we need to, to do that outreach and contact them. So that's a, a very, very important part of um, the, the whole plaque, it's, uh, it's fundraising, getting it on, and reaching all of these women veterans. Ladies out there, <clears throat> if you're a veteran, please pay attention to it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and one of the things um, which is very interesting, as soon as we did this, I received um, a letter from 
Edna Garish from Goldsboro, Maine, and a nice little handwriting that we remember from school when we were in school, that, the nice handwriting, and it said that she had heard me on a radio show, and she was a veteran of World War II um, and didn't know anything about the plaque or about services or anything. And it was interesting. She says, I'm taking a chance that you will receive this letter that I'm mailing to you because I don't have a website or an email and I don't know how to reach you other than this. Now, this I find so interesting because here's this woman right here in Maine who writes the letter. On the same day, I received an email from Second Lieutenant Melanie Skidgel. And she is right now in Afghanistan. Oh, my. So she is currently serving our country in Afghanistan on the war of terrorism. And she sends me an email. So this just shows how the communications are from World War II mm -hmm. to the present day, where Melanie saw it actually on the Internet. And she read about it and was very interested. Fantastic. So we had several um, correspondence going back and forth between Melanie and she wanted to donate the hundred dollars, which was interesting because at the time uh, we did not have online contributions. It was only by check, and she didn't have a check available for her. So we contacted her mother back here in Maine, and her mother sent in the check, and then her mother is going to come to the ceremony on the dedication on it. So it just shows the, the different worlds apart well, on the old-fashioned way and the, and the new way to get in touch World with us. World War II, is, that's a long time ago. Yes, yes. I spoke with a World War II veteran the other day, and it was so interesting because, again, kind of diminishing her service and she was in Hawaii. She was a nurse and she said, well, in her words, all I did was fly into Okinawa and get the wounded soldiers and tend to them on the way back. And I'm oh, thinking, oh, all you did during a war was fly into Okinawa under enemy air fire. I said, you know, this is somebody that we really need to honor and we really need to do it. Uh, and that's why we're raising money not only for the plaque, but we're also raising money for the commemorative coins. Every woman veteran that comes forward and tells us she's a main woman veteran, uh, we're going to be giving a silver coin to. And so we have the... Let me see. I thought I had it in my pocket right here. And there it goes. These are the coins. And, oh, um, isn't that beautiful? So they have it. Um, who designed that? The design was all done locally. Gary Cooper, who um, is a... St and the, the coin is identical to the plaque on the back. It's the same thing. So what we've done in order to do fundraising, it's beautiful. we have a thousand limited edition coins. So for everybody that contributes Very nice. every hundred dollars, they'll get a bronze limited edition coin. But in addition to that, we're also doing the coins in silver. And so every woman veteran who comes forward will be getting a silver coin free of charge. So everybody will have the coins. And we're hoping to do outreach. Um, there could be any estimates have it anywhere at five to 10,000 women veterans in the state of Maine. And we have a list right now of 142. So there's a lot of women veterans out there. You need to contact us. You need to let us know that you're out there. We want you at our ceremony. We want to give you the silver coin. And we want you to be aware of the services and benefits that you're entitled to. Imagine World War II. There aren't many veterans left from World War II. Yeah, and um, actually this um, <coughs> memorial... Um, to, to recognize the Maine women veterans and the coins. It was really to do an outreach to, um, to get the names of the living women veterans so we could show them what services are available to them and give them one of their coins. But what's happened is that so many people have now heard the story and they're giving us information about deceased relatives. Uh, and I went down to the um, American Legion the other night, which was interesting. And one of the men, when I came in, gave me the obituary for their aunt. And 
this, his aunt died seven years ago, and he's so proud of that, and he said, can you put her name on the list? So what we've decided to do now is not only do a list for the living woman, but anybody who submits a name from the past, because what we found is that people are extremely proud of the accomplishments of their, their wives, their mothers, their aunts, their grandmothers, and we didn't want to say to anybody, no, we're trying to reach out to the living woman because now um, there's, been so, there's a story behind every single woman. And when we hear these stories, <coughs> it's like, yes. So we started a, a, another list now for women veterans who were deceased so that we will be able to reach out to their families also and let them know when the ceremony is and what things are going on. That's great. Yeah. It's wonderful. Do you know those ladies up there? Yes. Um, Actually, all of the women are from the state of Maine, and um, on the pamphlet that we have here, it mentions everybody. On the plaque, if you're just looking at the plaque, starting over here on the left, um, is from the Revolutionary War, Hannah Watts Weston, and her great-great-granddaughter actually posed for that plaque right oh, there. Oh, my. That is actually a relative of um, Hannah Watts um, Weston, who served, um, well, didn't serve during the Revolutionary War, but was a patriot, and went out and collected um, gunpowder and lead so that, um, that the soldiers would have ammunition and everything. So from Maine, and then again, we wanted to, where nursing was such a very important part of the military for women, um, for that Emily Dana, who served as a Union Army nurse during the Civil War, and she's also from Maine. And the one on the far right over here is pa, um, Patricia Chadwick Erickson, and she was a World War II, the Army Air Force service pilot, so she worked on planes. And in the center is Sergeant um, Annette Bachman, who served on the War on Terrorism for the Maine Army National Guard. And Ms. Bachman um, posed for that, and she's been coming around with us to uh, a lot of the Great. radio shows, introductions. She was there on the unveiling of the design on that. So she's been more of a celebrity. Uh, she's very shy. We've been having her at the meetings, and I don't think she knew when she posed for the plaque that she was going to be thrust into such a, a position <laughs> of, of doing talk shows. I and, think doing and, what she did is harder than this. <laughs> yes. So um, everybody on there um, is a Maine woman veteran from the state of Maine, and we wanted to honor that. It's a very large bronze plaque that we'll be hanging, and it's in a wonderful location. It's right outside the governor's office in the Hall of Flags, r at the bottom of the grand staircase. And every time there's a press conference, the press conference is in front of the grand staircase. So everybody looking will be having the plaque right to the left of them. So um, we're very excited about this. One now, how did this whole idea start?